quilters, welcome to Master Sashing Techniques Mix and Match Show. Now, as you might have noticed, we're missing an important person in today's show. That's Lynn. right. Lynn is gone. She's off dreaming up all sorts of new products and promotions for our viewers. That's right, she is. But she will be back just in time for August 3rd show. And August 3rd, is the we not launching some new product? Hmm. hmm. It's the first Tuesday of the month. Must be a new dye to try. All right. Do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, okay. Oh, I'm Pam Heller. I'm the <laughs> cutting expert. I got nothing. <laughs> I, evidently, I'm, evidently lends our brain. I don't know. Apparently, I have, I have struggled all morning. <laughs> all morning. And I'm Erica, the corporate marketing specialist. All right. Let's get ourselves on, let's get our yeah, heads on straight get and get into master sashing techniques. Now, today we're going to talk all about pairing AccuQuilt strip dies together with cubes to breathe new life into your projects. And I love this because I'm not a big, like, sashing kind of gal. No, I, so, it, it, it really can bring out the design. Yeah. AccuQuilt's Go Cube system is the foundation of a fantastic quilt. That's why in today's show, we're going to show you how to use our cubes and our strip dies to create dynamic quilts. That's right. To help you do it, we've got some great prizes, exciting project ideas, an inspirational trunk show, and a special offer only available today. We also have two featured experts with an inspirational challenge that you, as our viewers, will get to vote on later in the show. That's right. Plus, we have a very special guest joining us today, the amazing Eleanor Burns. All right, Pam, let's get started by inspiring our quilters and showing them what they can do with cubes and strip dies. Let's do that. All right, so here's today's stars of the show, our Go Cubes and Go Strip Dies. That's right. Now we know how versatile the Go Cubes and Strips are. And I also really love how easy they are to use. I mean, they unlock my creativity and quite frankly, I try things that I never would attempt without the dies. Oh, every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. And for me, the taking the math out of that equation means that I can focus on bringing my quilting ideas and my yes. quilting brain, right, to life. In case you're unfamiliar with the Go Cubes and Strip Dies, um, our cubes have eight geometric shapes that right. work together. That's right. And we have two companion sets and that each have four different shapes. Right. If you bind all those shapes together, how many blocks can you make? 216, and that's before you add your creative imagination to it. Right, and all of those patterns are free downloadable at yep. AccuQuilt.com, yep. right? The great thing about our cube system is those geometric shapes have that quarter inch seam allowance yep. built in. So if Erica wants, you know, a five inch square, I'm gonna say, ooh, do you want a five inch square or five inch finished square? Exactly. Right, those exactly. are two different shapes. And they're gonna cut quick and easy and perfect perfectly every time. Right, and you can match cubes. You and I, we do this all yes, the time, we do. match different sizes yeah. of cubes. All right, and they're just so fast and easy to put together. And then of course, we've got our strip dies. Yes. Now strips aren't as easy to cut perfectly as you would think. No. Rulers slip, your hands get tired. What do you call that thing in the middle when it doesn't cut right? An, a, an oopsie doodle or? A dipsy doodle. Dipsy doodle. There we go. I couldn't remember what I said last week. We should week. trademark a that. Dipsy doodle. A dipsy doodle. No dipsy doodles. They're going to be straight no. across. We'll show you how later. And we have a total of 18 different sizes of strip dies. That's dyes right. Because we just added two new strips. That's right. And our top weeks. selling die is the two and a half inch strip. Right. And it's kind of magical because you can cut a queen size binding with that one in one pass through the cutter. That's yeah, just amazing. You can also use your strip dies to cut squares and diamonds and by far, hands down, the fastest four patches you have ever made you wanna make with a strip die. And yes, you can cut bias binding with People them too. ask us that all the time. All the time, all the time. That's all right. All right, well these dies are all lovingly made with quilters in mind because we're quilters ourselves. We are. And we understand the struggles that quilters have. That's why each die is designed to make quilting as fast and easy as possible. That's right. All right, Erica, let's share today's special with our quilters so you can get what you need to become a master satchel. That's right. Okay, quilters, for today only, you can get 27% off your order. How much? 27%. Wow. Now, you do need a code. It's my27 at checkout. Plus, you're going to get free shipping if you live in the contiguous U.S. Now, if you spend more than $325, okay. you're also going to get a free Go Me Fabric Cutter starter set. And is there additional code for that? No additional code. It will just be lovingly placed in your box. Now, some exclusions apply, so be sure to check out the website for details. 
Quilters, we know you don't want to miss a minute of our show, but today's deal is only available until midnight central time. So be sure to take advantage of this discount and get yourself a free little Go Me as well. That's right. And, hey, here's a tip. The Go Big is back in stock. What? Yes. I knew that. I know it that because we went back in the warehouse to just to double check and make sure to see for ourselves, didn't the we? The Go Big is in stock, but... We have limited quantities. That's right. That's and, right. And Erica, it's part of the 27% off sale. I know it's less than $438. And it will ship free to there you, you go. those of you in the contiguous US. And if you get a go big today, you're gonna get a go me. We use our gomis all the time. All the time. I have one right next to my sewing machine because just <laughs> yesterday <laughs> just... I didn't cut four squares. And <laughs> there you go. Rather than heaven forbid getting up. Right? I <laughs> we wouldn't want that to me. happen. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, to get your order in for all these things during the show, you can use your phone's camera, capture the QR image you see on the screen. It'll take you right to the site. If you don't have access to a QR reader, no worries. You'll just want to open a new tab in your browser, go to the top of the page and click on that plus sign. In that very top box, type in acuquilt.com slash party. Eric and I are here to have a party to place your order. That's right. You can also find these dies at your local AccuQuilt retailer. Now to find a retailer near you, go to the top right side of the website and look at the store locator. Quilters, we know our dies and fabric cutters are an investment, so AccuQuilt offers fast and easy financing with installments or split pay options. Mm -hmm. For more information on financing through AccuQuilt, visit accuquilt.com slash financing. All right, so let's talk cubes real quick. Just before we get in, we want to make sure everybody is kind of up to speed, shall we say, on Look, our cubes. This is such a good little bicep workout. <laughs> this is our 10-inch cube. I don't think, Erica, we have ever shown the 10-inch cube. I don't know cube. that we have. So we should do it. Have. It's one of my favorites. Actually, I love it because the math is even. Yes. I can do that in my head. All right. 10, 20, 30. You know, when Pam and I first joined AccuQuilt, all of the dyes were individual. Mm -hmm. They were all individual. They didn't come in cubes. It was confusing. It was overwhelming to quilters, really. Well, that's okay. Yeah, just throw all right, things. We had our basic 72 mix and match blocks and a chart, but it was really frustrating for quilters to find out, like, figure out, like, how to get started with the system, what patterns to use, right? Mm -hmm. And the cube changed that forever. It did. Now, instead of a tall stack of dies and various size mats, all you need is this compact cube. And it also serves as a great storage and organization system. I mean, it's a win-win. Right. And it stores your dies the way you need to. Right. So this is our 10-inch cube. Um, our 10 and our 12 will fit in our go and our go big mm -hmm. because it has actually two different sizes of dies. Right. So, Erica, why did we pull the skinny one first? So we don't break a nail first. Some of us have beautiful nails here yes. in the studio yes, look we at this do. right there so if you pull the skinny one first erica would Wait, never break one of me, those nails let me thank you let me then then my nails can go and look there's a mat and we're gonna need that will you pull it out for us i will but i have to like show yes. my nails <laughs> see i do these myself i know i find that amazing i should just come over and you, you can should just do i'll mine. do your nails okay all right, so we're going to pull out these two other sections. Okay. So let's get our little pieces I know, I know. I'm making, I'm making space here. There you go. Okay. okay so we're going to open this one first. Okay. And then we're going to pull this one out. See, it all fits together. Aside. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first up, we start, we said we had eight. Now, the important thing to remember is that they all have the same shapes in them. They're just different sizes because right. we have cubes that come in four, six, eight, nine, 10 and 12 inch spinach sizes. Yes. But in all of them, number one is a square, right? Yep. So look, here's my square. And in all of them, four of that number one square sewn together is going to be that size of cube finished block. Here and we go. So it's a four patch system. Mm -hmm. So don't think in your quilting head, oh, I'm going to get the 10 inch cube. It's going to have 10 inch blocks. No, you have to sew. There's a little sewing involved. Yeah. Okay. So all the cubes based on a four patch system. Okay. So shape number three is one of my all-time favorite shapes, Erica. So this is the half square triangle, and this is a great time to point out yep. that half square triangles and quarter square triangles all have the dog ears cut out for you. And right. that's going to save you even more time right. because it's going to show you where the quarter inch seam allowance is, and you're going to just press it open and be done. Yep. No so trimming. So you're going to sew two of them together, and it's going to equal shape number one. That's right. Okay. Now, next up, we've got our quarter square triangle. Right. All right. Let's pull this die out. Okay. I'll These are so much the... taller. I'm not used to looking over <laughs> well, them. Well, that's why you have to pull them up. Okay. There we go. There we go. So there's our little four patch. There we go. 
Now, or for our quarter square triangles. Now, yes. some of you in your quilting head are going to sew these together wrong. Right. That is correct. Right. That is so correct. So you want to make sure you follow the instructions, and you want to sew the short ends together first. Yes. Press to the dark side and sew the um, long ends together after that. And we want to be sure we're keeping that lengthwise grain to the outside of the block. Right. Just keep that in mind. Right. And the cube system is so great because it's a great scrap buster. Um, to make my little sample blocks, um, I just found a whole bunch of different scraps. Imagine that. And then, here we go. We've got yep. two more over here. Okay, so shape number seven. Um, okay, do you know Justin's wife's gonna have a baby tomorrow? She is. So Justin woke up this morning and said, gosh, I hope there is a parallelogram. Because in the clearly cube. it will help labor go more smoothly. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so shape number seven is a parallelogram, but tell us about it, Erica. It is a directional shape. So that's a key to make keep in mind. You need to know how your fabric needs to face, whether you cut it face up or face down. Right. And what you see on either side here to make it a rectangle is going to be our shape number five, our half square triangle, the small one. Stay tuned, we're getting to that one quick. Yep. And then shape number eight is a rectangle. Look and again, this. we're gonna sew two rectangles together to equal shape number one. And this is a good time to point out that sometimes on our cube system, there are multiple shapes mm -hmm. on one die board. So you really wanna read the instructions. If your pattern says, you need two rectangles, you only need one piece of fabric. Right. Right? Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna give you that. Next. Now next is our short um, box. Now some of you are already stressed because where's the mat? Ta-da, right here. Right there. Is the mat that belongs and I'm gonna pull it out. Yep. Okay, Erica, talk about shape number shape two. Shape number two is our small square. So four of shape number two put together is gonna equal one of shape number one in every single cube. Yep. Yep, and again, squares are really hard to cut. They are. I yeah. messed them up yesterday thinking I could cut them by myself. I was wrong. Silly bear. Silly bear. Okay, and then this is shape number five. Now, this is smaller half square triangles. So in right. every cube, there's big half square triangles and smaller half square triangles. But this is actually like our workhorse. Yes, and this is what you saw us put on either side of that parallelogram to turn mm -hmm. it into a rectangle. Yep. And you're gonna need it again. Wait, keep that one out. Oh yes, let's cut that one. Let's cut that. There we go. Good thing you're here. And the last one. So many one, reasons yeah, why Yeah, I you're... just can't leave her alone. Okay, the last one is not just a square, but it's a square on point. It's meant to live on its little tippy toes. That's right, and it's meant for shape number five to go on all four sides so that it equals shape number one. Yep, so we'll pull that one out Perfect. here. Perfect. So we wanna just show you, just so you get kind of the feel of how these work. We want to show you how to cut. Now we've got to go big here because they're back in stock. They are and we love them. We love them. And so our go big is actually four inches wider than our go fabric cutter. Yes. So we can actually run two dies through in one pass. So we're going to because we can. Because we can. Is this mine? Yeah. Okay. So remember quilters you want that lengthwise grain nice and tight. Okay I'm going to put it right here. Put on a mat, each die has to have their own mat. Now, important to realize that we are fully aware that that shape is on an angle on the die board. Mm -hmm. And your fabric needs to follow the die board. Yes, See? it's on a shape, be on an angle because it's like a speed bump. That's right. You know, if you hit it with both wheels, it get that darn effect, but one wheel at a time, much smoother. Nice now, and smooth. Now, this is our big parlor trick for today. Find my... Labels. Find your label. Okay, so look, each die has their own, or each die has their own mat, and look, ta-da! How quick is that? And that go big is like four thirty-eight. Yeah. And free shipping. Give it some love. We're gonna slide that mat. Don't lift. And now look, we've cut these pieces. So we're gonna lay it here and show you how that triangle or the now square don't point works. Panic. So what you're gonna do yes. is you're gonna lay this out. We promise. Don't panic. This works perfectly. I'm gonna put this here because I okay. realized I cut yellow and it's oh up. yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's still pretty wild. Okay. So you are gonna sew on either side. We're gonna sew opposite sides. Then we're gonna go ahead and press those open. When we do that, it is gonna lay out just perfectly. Right, because in your quilting head that you're gonna say, oh, Pam and Erica, wait, there are little points there, but yep. they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be, and trust us, when we lay it out then, those dog ears are gonna match up. You're gonna do your quarter inch seam. It's gonna be perfect. Yeah. And the same Yesterday the I was sewing this block, and I thought, oh, this is so cool. So look at that. 
Look at that. And then you press it open. Yeah. There you go. When you look at it again, you're going to say, oh my goodness, it doesn't go all the way to the corner. That's your seam allowance. Yeah, corner is seam. Absolutely perfect. It's beautiful. All right. All right, quilters. For this week's show, our experts are being challenged to take one strip die. I'll take my half square triangle. Okay. And one cube. <laughs> to come up together with a beautiful project that uses cornerstones and or sashing. That's right, Pam. Now, one of them will be putting their project on point as well for just a little extra challenge. It's I, gonna be really fun. You know what, I'm super excited about this because again, I often don't think, oh, I should turn my blocks on point. Right. And I hardly ever do sashing and cornerstones. And it makes such a difference. Yeah. All right, so first up we've got Tammy. Now, Tammy is an experienced quilter whose love of quilting started 40 years ago when she made her first quilt for her baby daughter. Tammy has used the AccuQuilt system since 2009 and she loves making memory quilts. Next up we have Anita. Anita teaches classes at her local quilt shop and military spouses group. Her passion for quilting goes back to her childhood filled with scrap fabric and the desire to spend time with her grandmother. Our grandkids are gonna say that. Yes, they yep, are. They are. Now she makes between 10 to 15 quilts a year and enjoys the story behind each and every quilt she sews and sees. I really am excited about yeah. this. Now, I can't wait to see what our experts come up with during the show. Now, if you're new to quilting, sashing is a great technique to use to help your quilt blocks stand out. That's right, and you can use our strip dies to quickly cut the strips of fabric that you need to separate your blocks or rows of blocks. So let's show you how. All right, so today, Erica, we're gonna use the strip die. Yep, we're gonna use our two inch strip die. So let's take a look at it. And there are some different things with the strip die than with all of our other dies, right, Pam? Yes. First of all, we tell you to cut on the lengthwise green, right, through the blades that are parallel to the blades, but I never cut lengthwise strips. Because? You it doesn't. It doesn't care because it has it no care. crosswise blades. So right. in this die, you can lay your fabric any which way that you want, and yep. that's why you can cut with the fabric strips because that's how we usually cut them, right? Correct. Correct. All right. So this die actually has five blades. So one, two, three, four, five. No blades down here and yep. no blades down here. Now what I did was I measured Erica from here to here, added a quarter of an inch on either side and just cut a width of fabric strip, okay? Okay, now the other thing is that we've got some angled guidelines. Now, don't get confused, don't panic. There are no blades under those no. guidelines. They're just ways to show you how to multitask with your die. So we're gonna cut some strips and show you what we mean. Right, now you can always cut six layers of quilting cotton. Right. And if you were to use the two and a half inch strip die, you could cut enough binding for a queen size quilt, That's right? That's right. So today we're just gonna cut two layers. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna lay it on there this die. Go. So we're gonna take this folded edge because the fold is straight, right? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna line it up right here. Yep. Parallel to this black line, okay? Yep. Now, past this line, there are no blades. So you wanna make sure that it stops before that. Yep. Okay, and then just make sure that it's over all the blades. And I always put my fold in first. I do too. Mm -hmm. And I cut off the, um, the salvage edge because you're gonna cut it off anyway. That's right. Okay, so you need a mat because what happens if you try to use the die without a mat? Absolutely nothing. Not a mm -hmm. darn thing, right? Here we go. So we have 18 sizes of strip dies that will fit in your go and your go big. Yep. But we also have two sizes that will fit in your go me. That's right. They're 27% off today with that code MY27. And out of that 18, they start at one inch wide. They go all the way up to six and a half. Yep. Do you have a favorite size? You know, I use the two and a half a lot, but I think my next favorite is the one and a half. I do love one and a half. I use one and a half and one and three quarters to make flange lining. Oh, mining. and that is our favorite. It is. Okay, give us some love because boys, it's static. It's like 110 degrees today. Yeah, it Omaha. is hot in Omaha. All right, so here we go. So look at these perfect strips we cut. Okay, Erica. No dipsy doodles in the middle. Right, we're gonna show you no dipsy doodles. Mm -mm. I love that. I used to call them mountains in the middle. Now I call no, them dipsy doodles. No dipsy doodles. Okay. So now we've taken our perfect strips, and I'm gonna turn this die so I can see it. Okay. All right, so now we have 60, 45, and 30, and what are those for, Erica? Those are for making diamonds. So I'm gonna use the 60 over here, and you do wanna make sure you're, you've got all of your fabric on, you know, you don't fold until over the other side of the blade. Right, we call this fan folding in we the We do call it fan folding. Okay. All right. How you doing there? Pretty good, pretty good. good. 
Okay. okay. And I'm going to start here at 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm going to do exactly what Erica did. I'm going to fan fold, make sure my fold comes past those blades. Now, some of you are going to say, boy, Pam and Erica, you are wasting a whole lot of that dye. But actually, you could start your strips here and go all the way you down. Could. Or you, you could, could take your, your diamonds all the mm -hmm. way up. All the way across. All right, but we're just going to do this. And for those of you who, who were like me in geometry, because they weren't smart enough to teach it to me with fabric, we're going to be making <laughs> diamonds and squares. And those squares are going to be the perfect way to turn into cornerstones. And the thing about squares that are hard is that you have to cut a perfect strip first. Right. And for me, I wasted so much fabric when I was first learning how <laughs> well, to Well, And it's frustrating, it too. It is, because you can never cut them straight, and then they have That's the right. dipsy doodle, and then... You can only yep. use some of it. I mean, it just goes on forever, okay? I think this is the right way. All right, give us some love. Slide our mat, don't lift. There we go. Look at this, okay. So we're gonna start with, look at all these squares which are perfect for cornerstones. Yep. But Erica has a magic trick with so her 60 degree diamonds. So look at these diamonds. So there are so many fun things that you can do with diamonds. You can go ahead and do like a classic tumbling block. Isn't that so cool? So you would have them three different colors. You can do chevrons. Yep. And you can do diamonds with them too. Do stars. Mm -hmm. Do stars. Look how pretty that is. Look how pretty. Okay. Let me take you yep. over there. There you go. Da, 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 da. And look at that. Perfect. All right. All the things you can do with a strip die. It's amazing. Now, if you want to be a master sasher, then you are definitely going to want some AccuQuilt dies on your side. And that will really help you make everything perfect. Just like we said, no dipsy doodles. Now, we're going to check with our experts shortly to see what they're coming up with by mixing a strip die and a cube. Yes. And don't forget that we have our special guest. <gasps> you ready? The head stripper herself, Miss Eleanor Burns, should be coming up right soon. That's right. But before we do that, how about giving away two of our newest strip dies? I think that's a great idea. After oh. we give them away, we'll meet Eleanor Burns yes. to see how she combines strips with cubes to create cornerstones and sashing. And let's add our book today to get the giveaway. This is called Go Outside of the Box Pattern Book, and it is by Eleanor Burns. She, it is. Eleanor will walk you through using the Go system to make her popular Fab 40 blocks and show you just how easy it is to cut a variety of 9 to 18 inch blocks using the 6 and 12 inch cubes. Plus, she shares her detailed quilting and binding instructions. It's really fabulous. It's just the perfect addition to today's giveaways. That's right. All right, the first strip die we're going to give away is one of our new two and three quarter inch strip dies. The winner of this strip die and Eleanor's book is, drum roll please. Yvonne W. from Owensboro, Kentucky. Congratulations, Congratulations. Yvonne. You oh. are going to love this one. Oh, totally. All right, the second die we're going to give away is our new six-inch strip die. And the winner of this die and book is, drum roll please, Janet F. from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Congratulations, Janet. Filters, be sure and share photos of what you make with oh, your yeah. new dies on our Facebook page. That's right. We can't wait to see your creation. All right, we got to put on some, we oh, got to put on yes. our boas We got to get ready here. Um, if you ever have the chance to visit Quilt in a Day, Eleanor Burns just wants you to cut strips for a stripper. So um, her so we're sign, ready. her sign at um, Quilt in a Day says, reserved for the head stripper. There you go. So we are honored to have quilting <laughs> rock star Eleanor Burns joining us today to share her insight about sashing and cornerstones. Mm -hmm. Eleanor started a quilting revolution, sharing her methods for cutting and sewing quilts. She's become an icon in the quilting industry since the publication of her very first book in 1978. Her PBS shows, which started in 1990, changed the way we all look at putting together our quilts. Her warm and entertaining style makes even beginner quilters feel like anything is possible. And I just love that about she, her. She's just terrific. That's right. She has published over a hundred books, has her own signature fabric lines, <laughs> and so much more. She is a great fan of our AccuQuilt products and continues to be an amazing partner with us. Welcome, the one and only head stripper, one of our all-time favorite people, Eleanor Burns. Hi, Eleanor. <laughs> Welcome, Eleanor. <laughs> Look at you. I'm ready. We're well, well, are you going to just take your bow and swing it a little? Come That's on, let's get with there it. Go. There we go. Get that, that body oh, going with she, it. She, and she then doubled. just she take doubled. it 
and get rid of it. Ready? That's all, also my theme is fine. <laughs> Obviously, Eleanor has done this way more times than we have. <laughs> Eleanor, thank you so much for joining us live. I know our viewers would love to hear how you got started in AccuQuilt. Oh, that's a good story. <laughs> well, it was years ago, and I have to tell you that my life is a blur right now, except that I remember this night very well. I was on Nancy Zeman's stage in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. We had a song playing, and we were supposed to shuffle across the stage. So we were all shuffling, and the next thing I knew, my shoe caught on the stage, and I was on my shoulder. You know the rest. It was a torn rotator cuff. It's never been better. So look, this is all the higher that wow. I can go. And wow. so that's when I started with my AccuQuilt. I said, oh my gosh, I can't even move this. I can't rotary cut. And arthritis just right. keeps on coming too. <laughs> so those two things really started me using the AccuQuilt cutter and I love it. Yay. Well, we are so glad AccuQuilt was able to help you out because we couldn't have Eleanor Burns not able to cut. I know. And, <laughs> and sure. thank you for sharing your story. Now this show is all about sashing and cornerstones. Eleanor, do you have a go-to size for sashing or lattice that you like to use? Well, probably my favorite one is the two and a half inch strip die. Right. And I remember I heard that that was your number one number strip one. seller. And I looked at it, I could not believe how you're supposed to cut it. I found out <laughs> and now I know. <laughs> yeah. Now, not only is it our number one strip die, but it's our number one selling die yep. of all time. Yeah. And it's so popular for so many things because you can make jelly rolls and cornerstones and sashing. Now, Eleanor, do you have some examples of for us to see where you used our two and a half inch strip die for sashing? <laughs> do I, I have Just a some few? samples? Just That's a, few. a silly question. <laughs> so, all right, let's see. Let me get my favorite green out of the way. <laughs> And now I'm gonna have Teresa help me. This is my assistant. Hello, Teresa. Hi, hi Teresa. Thanks hi, for Teresa. joining Hello. us. <laughs> so everything that I show you in this stack is in this book, go outside the box, and you'll understand it more as we go along. Yeah. So the first one I have is called the Silent Star. This was a six cube, I call it a six, because it's not really inches. Whenever you use three across of that six cube, the finish size is nine inches. So it's really fun. So no lattice. And I actually do call it lattice instead of sashing. So you kind of, you can use either one. No sashing. And what's difficult is that whenever you just have the background color, it's hard to line up so that they go straight down mm -hmm. for each one. So it just has plain sashing, plain lattice, and what's even more fun is the border. It's a really Look cute ribbon border. So cute. It's hard to believe this is just a half square and a quarter square triangle, but when you put them all together, it's really good. It's okay. gorgeous. First one, oh, I wanted to tell you three inch, I use a three inch binding and you can get a three inch strip die. Perfect. Is that good it's for beautiful. a start? It's beautiful. Yes. Okay, let's shake it up a bit. My <laughs> favorite colors, red, white, and blue. All of these blocks are in the book and they're my favorite colors. I'm a 4th of July. Oh, I pop too soon the 3rd of July on my birthday. And so I love to use all the red, white, and blue. The blocks are set together with the lattice and then a cornerstone in between to help them all line up. Looks better, easier to do. And then um, half square triangles again for a Rudy Tootie border. I thought that was a fun name. That's Don't you great. think? I love that name. Rudy Tooty, and it's all scraps. That's the best part. You know, Beautiful. even with my AccuQuilt cutter, I take almost every single little piece, every scrap, and put it in a box. You thought I threw it on the floor, huh? <laughs> well, if I do throw it on the floor, I pick it up myself anyways. 
So this one's really cute, all the blocks. And there's the silent star right down there on that. the edge. Oh, wow. Long arm quilted. You know, Teresa and I do not do our quilting. We like to quilt with the company credit card. Get that <laughs> girl. Really there good. you go. There you go. There we go. And you can see the back, how pretty it is. It's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Beautiful quilting and such. Three inch binding around the outside. I find well, we're going to switch to color it. now. Yeah. Color or the sashing makes all the difference in the world. I'm gonna come back here. Now this quilt actually has um, the mix and match blocks, the oh angles oh and the corners all in one quilt are autumn leaves. And you can see just a background for the lattice. And then the cornerstones again are all scrappy. You can mix up all the colors and put it together. So it's just really, really beautiful. I think there's like seven different dyes in that. Well, that's just plain background if you wanna calm it down a little bit. But let's get, ooh, let's get fancy. Look at this one, Look at this perfect. One. I dressed, this is going into the fall season, so I already dressed for it. So this is the same block, but this time we used a print, a dark print, to frame each one of the blocks. Wow. Again, a cornerstone to help set them all together. So it's just beautiful. Oh, I, lo sweet. I love this one. I love the points in it and such. Really fun to do. Yeah. Well, that's one. But then the next one is really fun. Look at this one. This, <gasps> this is one that Teresa did. And she couldn't decide which lab this to use. <laughs> and so she said, OK, I'm going to use them all. And she did. So you can see she started clear down on the bottom. You can point it out down there. OK, she started with the bottom blocks and put just the dark. And then she worked her way up into medium lattice. And it's on diagonal rows until with me, light and the lightest. So wow. doesn't that make it easy? It, you, then you can make your decision and just go for it. Oh, Good, it's you stunning. like this one? Yes, yes we love it. Stunning. Good job, Teresa. <laughs> we love all of them. Oh my gosh. Oh, good, good. Eleanor, good. thank you so much for sharing your quilts with us. Now do you- Oh, but I'm not done. Oh, oh good, There's keep more. Going. Yes. Oh my goodness, I have more. <gasps> good, come on. Okay. This one is my fun one, I love it. Um, my home in the mountains is called the Bear's Paw Ranch. And so I love Bear's Paw. So this is our pattern called Bear Track. It has all AccuQuilt cutting in it. And I did this one with um, layer cake, 10 inch squares. I Thought it would that. be a lot of fun to do. So I got so all the different pretty. multiple colors. And you see, no lattice, yeah. no sashing to separate them. And I don't know, if you think that the blocks look kind of crammed together, well, you can fix it. How about that? And look again, little tiny half square triangles yeah. around the yeah. edges. This is probably one of my favorites. I really like this one. And beautiful on the back. The quilting is great. It looks no like lattice, a birthday party. <laughs> but I had to try Lattice. There you okay. go. Oh, okay. So this is one way of making your whole quilt bigger. You just start <laughs> adding lattice in between each one of the blocks, right? And right. That's exactly make it bigger. right. And okay. it's the same amount of blocks, but the lattice goes a lot quicker. The all of the corner stones are scrappy in it. But what's important with this one, I didn't finish it for a reason. I wanted to show you the back side. And let's see if Eric can get nice and close to it. Wow, look it's at that. It's depressing. I like the back side oh. to look just as pretty as the front side. So the rule is you always press your seam when you put the lattice in, you press your seam toward the lattice. Oh, that's a always great press tip. Always press it toward the yeah, lattice. Great that's tip. a great here. tip. And then again for the cornerstone, you press your seam toward the lattice. And that way, when they intersect, then they just lay nice and flat. But just That's remember great. that rule. Just press it toward the lattice and it'll lay nice and flat. And I have another trick too that I love to show you in my okay. patterns. 
I do that swirling, you know, that yeah. swirling thing right in the middle. I take out just a few stitches and swirl clockwise around the center. So you have this nice flat top right there. Right. Yep. And I'm going to take and show you the other side. Makes it flat. And on the right side, ooh, don't take it away yet, Teresa. Then, <laughs> Look how ooh, perfect. it matches. That's pretty yep. good. That's so a great tip. If it didn't match, this is my secret. I just put my finger right over it, and you never know. <laughs> you have to learn that. <laughs> you learn all that kinds of such tips. Good okay, information. that might well be the best tip of the day. Yeah, great <laughs> tips. Great tips. And I'm not the only one. The TV does that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all pretty colors, and I. Just put it together recently, and I'm just waiting to find out if one of those pieces is turned wrong. But looks good, huh? Looks <laughs> Got to squint at it and catch it. Okay, there are tracks. So, I like two and a half, but, you know, we have all those different sizes. How right. many different right. sizes do we have? Eighteen. 18, 18, 18. The strip dies, just the strip dies. Yeah, just 18, 18, 18 strip dies. 18 strip dies. Oh my gosh, I am behind. You are. <laughs> I am behind. <laughs> but I also, I have the maple leaf and it's just the right time of the year to make it. And now we're using one inch strips. They're one, one inch finished, one and a half to start. Doing three one inch strips and then a cute little nine patch right there. I and like it just totally changes the whole effect of the quilt. Looks like more piecing at jo in joins in the center. It looks like a secondary pattern. Good. I love the feel of this one. Do we have, oh, look, stripe on the back. Ooh, oh, wow. Stripe. Ooh, look. That is fancy. Okay, so now I'm going to go away from the angles, the cubes, all of that and use your crazy quilt. Oh, okay, this is a great ready? Guy. Your yeah. crazy quilt. Oh, well, fun. I put my blocks together and it looks like there was a tornado that happened. Awesome. I mean, look at those crazy blocks. They are really crazy, aren't they? Oh, they're fabulous. So I said, okay, I gotta make this cute. That's my thing, make it cute. <laughs> and so I just took some of my strips. They are yep. also one inch finished. And sew them for the sides, strips together, little nine patch right in the corner. And I think I turned it. It looks cute. It does look cute. Very it's cute. darling. Very cute. But I want to show you my favorite okay. crazy quilt. This one is adorable, and I just ripped it off my wall. <laughs> so this one, ah, you like this one? I do. Oh, See, wow. I, I love the block. Yes. And it's separated by a narrower uh, lattice. You, you have to judge. Okay, a little block like this one, you wouldn't want to put a big old two and a half no. inch strip right. in between. It right. would kill it. It would just yeah. over, right. you know, overshadow the whole block. So I don't have a formula, but I have a design wall. And I'm always saying, <laughs> okay, well, I'll just put my block up. And I'll audition a couple of different sizes sure. of straps and scraps. And you have to uh, line up the edges so the quarter inch is missing. Just stand back, squint at it. Every good quilter knows how to <laughs> That's squint. That's a great That's tip. right. At her quilt. Yeah. This is that a good one. I love it. Eleanor, did you so, use layer cakes for that quilt? Do you know if you used layer? Did you use layer cakes for that? Because that's our go crazy quilt I guy. I did. It's perfect I for did. layer cakes. It is. It's I, perfect. You know, I stack up stuff, and <laughs> it was um, it was six layer cakes. Right. And then you just take the one piece, and, and you just um, you take from the bottom. You put the piece on the top. Yeah. and put it on the bottom, and then you put the second one, two on on the bottom, and you just mix it all up. It's and darling. It's great. And again, too. Um, this is probably like a two and a half inch strip for the binding. Right. You wouldn't want to use a wide three inch on that. So it looks really cute. Perfect. Beautiful. Perfect. I, I love the so colors. I love the colors. Okay. Now, 
Every single quilt I show you, I say I love it. This is my favorite. <laughs> this is another favorite. Okay. I am crazy about red and white. Wow. Oh, love that. Wow. Snowballs. Look at that. This is after the antique quilts. That's really where I get my inspiration yeah. from the antique quilts. And this is your snowball pattern, just alternating between um, the dark red and then the white. The two colors, it's really easy and lots of fun to do. Um, you can see how the quilting really shows up nice on it too. I love it. It's but beautiful. it's traditional. Mm -hmm. it's it is. It's calm, it's quiet. Oh, what have ah. you got next? What if, but if you take some real bright, colorful, crazy oh prints, you gotta do a lattice in between. Oh, there and so you go. this one, isn't that good? Okay, so Eleanor, again, that's my favorite. I, I did like the the um, ten inch squares, right? The layer cake. And what you cut away from this one, you can use for the corners. Sure. Oh, On yeah. another one, and so you see, they're all mixed up throughout the quilt. I mean, this one was just calling for a lattice in between. So it's almost framing it, making it like a, sure. a picture mm -hmm. frame. And so it just looks really good. And then you can use whatever is left in the binding. <laughs> These are all the scraps. Oh, Nothing. scrappy binding. So, Nothing yes. on the scrappy floor. binding. That's amazing. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It's just really fun. That takes out the decision which color to make. Too. Sure. I love that. So I, want, sure. I, I love one that. one more okay. over here on the wall. This is one of my favorites as well. <laughs> this one is called Grandma Star. I'm a grandma, five of them, and I really enjoy it. But this is the block itself along here. And what happens is that the lattice actually has a cornerstone oh. on the end in between. So when you put that lattice with a cornerstone in between these blocks, then you create this chain that's going through your whole wow. quilt. And I know that students Oh, wow. that is why you are the one and only Eleanor Burns. That is amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> All right, I think we lost your microphone, so we're gonna have to go. We're oh, having a okay. technical problem. But there, I think she's oh, back. There we go. Thank you so much for sharing with us. I should talk to the camera, not the screen. Yeah. I'm talking to the screen like she's here. Yeah. Thank you for all of your tips, Eleanor. Thank you for being on our live. We hope to see you again in the future. Thank you, dear, for being with us. Goodbye. 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 Okay, uh, I gotta go home and sew stuff. I know, Eleanor I know. Eleanor showing us. So that um, go crazy quilt die? Yes. For the go, perfect to use layer cakes. Oh my cakes. gosh, now I wanna go home and make one. I have one at home, you can oh, borrow mine. Okay. Okay, so many great patterns Eleanor <laughs> mentioned. Most of them are found in her go outside the box pattern book. Right. Which is part of the My 27, right? Yes. Now there was a couple that she showed, um, and these patterns are only available from Ac or from uh, Quilt in a Day. So it's right here. Hold on. Yes. So the Bear's Paw one. Which I love. Which I love is down here. It has yeah. a sticky note on it. Okay. So. Okay. Now, Quilt in a Day, um, they don't have any more of these books, right, Erica? No, but we do, and a lot of our retailers would. Right. Right? All right. All right. So don't forget those patterns you have to purchase separately yes. from Quilt in a Day, those two ones at the end. Yep. All right? That's exactly right. All right. And a huge shout out to Quilt in a Day and the amazing Eleanor Burns for sharing her lovely quilts with us today. And Teresa, she does such a great she job. She does. Um, remember, our products can be purchased at your local retailer, including Quilt in a Day. All right. Well, let's see a strip dye in action and check in with Tammy real quick to see how she's coming pairing her strip dye and cube. Tammy, what's your inspiration for us? Hey Pam, hey Erica, it's great to be back with you all today. I had a good time working on this next challenge, the cornerstones and sashing. And I did a little sample board back here and I'll show you some of the inspiration pieces I came up with for you. This is um, the Basket of Lilies, the, the, one of the latest diet tries. Now I could have sashed this just in a plain sashing, but I chose to go with the three strip sashing with colored cornerstones and it pulls all the color out of my blocks. 
Now I can change these cornerstones here into a different cornerstone by using quarter square triangles. And then I stripped some of my pieces and made quarter, quarter square triangles and it gives the whole quilt a different look. Now this is a uh, piece of sashing from a quilt I did, a Bonnie Hunter quilt this last fall. And I used, uh, a again, I used a three strip sashing here and it gives the appearance of weaving. So I'm up, under, up, under, up, under, up, under. And it's what weaves, this green weaves all the way through my quilt when it's all put together. And it was really quite beautiful. So here's one of, here's, I really do love this one. I like them all, but um, this is shaded squares. It's strip dies, guys, it's all strip dies. Just cut your strips, sew them together, turn them on a diagonal, trim them down, and um, voila, here you go. Now when I turn this corner, it's gonna just carry the blues and the red and the whites down throughout my quilt. And I don't need cornerstones on this one. It just turns the corner on its own. Here's another idea for you. This is called beads on a string. It's strip dies. So we have three different size strip dies in here. I've got my greens and my whites, which pulls my greens and my whites out of my quilt block, but it creates beads on a string. The nice thing about this is, um, this, is a, this is a sashing and it, creates its own cornerstone here. So my beads just turn the corner on their own too. So there's a lot of things you can do to create cornerstones and sashing with your strip dies. Now here's another one. I used the eight inch cube on this one. And um, I've got some embroidery pieces here, but I used the triangle and a square and I butted them together here, which gave me diamonds. Well, when I put a black cornerstone in the center here, then I end up with a star, which is really nice because now I've got blocks and blocks. Um, I go to a lot of my magazines. I love looking through old magazines. And this one here happens to be Quilt Maker from um, 2001. But this was a great one, Pinwheel Patch. Now this one looks like it's got big patches, really beautiful sashing and um, pinwheel cornerstones. So we've got blocks, cornerstones and sashing. But do we? We do not. These are two different blocks put together to create the illusion of sashing and blocks and cornerstones. So depending on how your blocks are laid out, you could end up with illusion like this. This is my go-to book every time. This is the Border Workbook, and this book was published in 1997, and I have used it a lot. And it has tons and tons and tons of different uh, border, they call them borders, but I use them as sashings, ideas in here. And that's where a lot of these ideas have come from was, is in this book right here. So find a good book as a resource, look through your old magazines, look in pictures of the internet, but. It's amazing the things that we can find to build sashing and cornerstones out of. So I'm gonna go finish up my final project and I'll be back with you all shortly. Oh, um, I love that she used old magazines to yeah. gather some inspiration yeah. about sashing. Absolutely. Okay, before we go on, we have some questions from our viewers. Yes. Okay, so the question is, like, why do we, why did we need to know about the shapes in the cube? Right. And then uh, the difference between sashing and cornerstones. And cor the sashing and lattice. Right. And really, that's just a choice in terms. Yes. Okay. Pam and I, we usually use the term sashing. We do. Eleanor usually uses the term lattice. Correct. Um, you can use them interchangeably, but that's why we wanted to show you the strip die because we knew that she was gonna bring up some things that you can do with those strip dies and we wanted you to see them in action. Right. But we also wanted you to see how you can use that strip die as a multitasker to cut squares that are gonna coordinate with it and automatically then you've got your cornerstone. Right, so you've cut that strip to make that sashing and now you have the perfect size of cornerstone. And we talked about the cubes because depending on if it's a smaller cube or a bigger cube, it's gonna change the size of sashing or lattice that you're gonna right. use. So you notice when Eleanor used that six inch block, she made the uh, go crazy quilt blocks, those right. finished to six inches. So you, she used a smaller strip die mm -hmm. to create that border mm -hmm. in between that sashing and those cornerstones. And you're also gonna see like with Tammy's where she used her cube shapes to actually make her sashing. Yes. So there's all different ways. So really it's about creativity and being aware of what's available for you so you can make great masterpieces. And don't forget this video and all of our other live videos live in our Facebook page. Oh, that's right. So you can, if, if at the end of the show you're thinking, I'm really not sure, come back and watch it and listen to Eleanor talk and Eric and I yep. and our experts, it'll be great. You bet. All right, quilters, remember once we reveal the final projects, we'll be asking you to vote on your favorite. So be sure to keep watching to 
to see the final projects and cast your vote. That's right. Now, if you are enjoying learning how to use your AccuQuilt dies in creative ways from our live shows like today, then you'll absolutely love our blog. It's great. We cover everything there from organizational tips and tricks to project tutorials that are exclusive from our amazing go-getters and everything in between. Be sure to subscribe so you get notified when a new blog goes live. Quilters, there is some really great inspiration on our blog. Yeah. Sometimes in my quilting brain, it just can't come up with a project <laughs> idea. I know, I'll stop by the blog and get some really yep. great inspiration. That's right. And it's funny you say that because I do the same thing because I think our go-getters are really inspiring. When I see their blogs come in, I love reading them and getting all their ideas. Well, if you need supplies to make your latest project in your quilting head a reality, then we've got a special deal for you. Today only, you can get 27% off your order. You'll need to use the promo code MY27 at checkout. Plus, it will ship free if you live in the contiguous U.S. So, for instance, that 10-inch cube that yes. we showed, it's on sale for less than $212. It's an amazing deal. And it will ship free and throw in a companion set, either corners oh, or angles. Yeah. It's 131 and some change. There you go. And if you get a cube and a companion set, those two companion sets, then we're gonna give you a free go meet. Oh, there you go. Well, today is the day to get your supplies to be a master sasher for sure. So again, you've got great savings out there, but the savings end at midnight central time because that's when the deal ends. Now, speaking of master sashers, let's check in with Anita. Anita, show us some of your techniques. Good afternoon. I was so excited to be invited to this challenge because I just love cornerstones and sashing and how much they can enhance your quilting. And I wanted to share with y'all today a couple of ways that I use the sashing and cornerstones. One of them is with this memory quilt here. I always try to incorporate as much of the material my clients give me as possible. So this worked out great. I used the army from the one of the t-shirts as a sashing, and then some of the pockets had special emblems on them too, and that worked perfect for cornerstones. So remember, your sashing and your cornerstones don't always have to be 100% quilters cotton. Work with what you have. Here's another example of the sashing where it had a helicopter on it, so I wanted to incorporate that into the quilt, as well as another pocket emblem that I used as a cornerstone. So that's one way that I incorporate sashing and cornerstones into my quilting. Now here is a totally different way. Now this quilt here was so fun to make with my strip dies and my um, cubes, but the original pattern called for these blocks to go together, and I just didn't like that. It seemed a bit crowded to me. So I gave each block a one inch sashing around it, which made for a two inch sashing total. And I set it on point because I think that just looks so much better. It brings out the heart shape in this quilt, and I just love it. So that's another way you can use your sashing. And of course, for y'all that tune in all the time, you've seen this just a few weeks ago. Don't judge me on my UFOs. It will get quilted one day. But another way I love to use sashing is to make use of the cornerstones as a pieced block, like I did in this one. Now this one's set on point, so it looks a little different, but you still have it so you can have your piece block here and then your sashing, which just makes those t-shirt quilts pop. So let me see, set on point, a piece cornerstone, and some sashing. I think I have a brilliant idea, so I better go off and get working on it, so I'll be ready for my reveal when y'all come back to me. Thanks again, we'll see y'all in a little bit. Oh, that was great, setting those on point. Setting them on point, it makes such a difference, and I'm excited to see her final project, too. All right, before we start with our trunk show, let's give away um, some new dyes yes, and Eleanor's book. Yes, yes, giveaways. Okay. All right, the first winner of our new two and a three quarter inch strip there die and that wonderful book is, drum roll please, Bonita M. from Liston, Indiana. Congratulations. All right. All right, our next one is the winner of our six inch strip die and our great book by our good friend Eleanor Burns. Yep. Drum roll please. 
Wanda R. from Battle Creek, Michigan. Oh, I think congratulations. She's cereal, right? Battle she Creek. should be. She okay. should be. All right, and I think they're going to just have such a great time. Oh, with they will. Their strip dice. All right, now we're about to reveal our experts' final projects, and after the reveal, we're going to ask you to vote for your favorite. So be sure and vote. Right, and let's see our master sashing techniques that our experts have come up with, mixing their cubes and strip dice. And right after that, we'll have the trunk show while you vote. Tammy, what did you come up with us for today? Hey Pam. Hey Erica. I'm back with my final project, and I'm calling this summer sashing sampler. I had a good time making this one. I did 3D pinwheel blocks and now these blocks can be used as blocks themselves or they can actually be used as cornerstones. So we have a variety of different sashings. I've got flying keys, I've got half square triangles, we've got um, 16 patch squares and I used the eight inch cube and the one and a half inch strip die to create this and the outside border is called accordion pleats and I have to tell you, with the AccuQuilt dies, this thing went together so easily. So enjoy, and here you are, summer sashing sampler. Okay, I love everything about that. Starting yep. with the colors, pinwheel blocks, and that border, see? That border, it's needed awesome. a cube for that. All right, Anita, what are you sharing with us today? Hi, ladies, welcome back. Well, I have finished up my reveal. I was working with the four inch mix and match, the companion angles the two and a half inch strip die and my eight inch setting triangles. And with all of that, I came up with pop stars. The reason I call it that is because in this pattern, my um, sashing and cornerstones is actually the meat of the quilt. I have a five blocks in here, all pretty much the same. But what you really see are those stars popping right there in that sashing and cornerstone. So this is a great way to use your strip dies to make your quilts pop. So I hope y'all enjoy this. Thank you and have a great day. Okay, absolutely oh. fabulous oh. using that cube to make absolutely. those. Absolutely. All right, quilters, voting is now open. If you're watching via our registration link, the voting box is found in the chat section just below where you type. And if you're joining us on <coughs> Facebook or YouTube, just type your favorite into the comments section. We're going to tally them at the end of voting. Is it going to be Tammy with her stunning summer sashing sampler? Or Anita with her exciting pop stars. Quilters, it's all up you, to you to decide. And don't forget why we're counting our vote, our special deal today, 27% off your order. Use that code MY27. If you order that two inch strip die today, you're gonna save $27. I love it when that map works. There you works. go. Plus, if you reside in the contiguous US, it will ship for free. Spend more than $325 and we'll give you a free Go Me fabric cutter. If you already have one, it's okay. Think about donating yep. them to a grandchild or your quilt guild or a church group. Take Lots it on the places. road. Take there it on the you road. Go. All right, Erica, should we have a little trunk Let's show? Let's have a trunk show. And we've got a big quilt to start us off. So Mike is here. And quilters, don't forget, each one of these patterns can be downloaded free on our website. This is one of my all-time favorites, and we're like Eleanor, we say that all the I time. I know, I know. This is called Boxing the Compass. Right, so here's those pinwheel blocks from your companion, or from your cube, mm -hmm. and then there's those half rectangles from yep. your companion set, triangle the and a square. square, and then that bigger block. So look at all the borders that go around it. It it's just, just sets it off, and then the little quarter square triangle block right there. right there. I just love that. Right. Yeah. So all of this made with your cubes and companion sets. Love it. All right. Next up, we've got our bright sampler quilt. So Erica, this is a really good example of showing um, how to make cornerstones and sashing. Right. So here's that sashing. Eleanor calls it lattice. Right. There's those cornerstones. Yep. We used our 12 inch cube. Yes. So this is a two and a half inch strip, which finishes to two inches. Right. And this would be a great way. These are 12 different mix and match blocks right. from the original 72. This would be a great way to get somebody started on making their first quilt. Right. And you can choose other blocks. You oh, don't yeah. Have to use yeah. Those. You could choose any block you want. There's no dye. Oh, blocks. I do love this one. Okay. This is some great 30s and 40s reproduction fabric. And gosh, I it's should crowns, know whose it is. It's crossing crowns with Moda. There we go. We'll hold it up. We will. Okay, so this is a real traditional pattern called 
uh, cross and crowns. So again, we've used our half square triangles and quarter square triangles. And then talk about that little shape in the corner, so, Erica. Well, we've got our sashing and our cornerstones, but look, we've actually put basically sashing our lattice in the middle of our block. Right. We separated the units this way to make that block bigger and really give a great design look. Yeah, it's just stunning. I love it. Okay. All right, the next block is behind us, the next quilt. This oh. is actually one of my favorites uh, because we took our eight inch cube, it's called Plus Points, our good friends from Moda. Um, this is Moda fabric. It's called Plus Points, so here's the sashing. There's those sweet little cornerstones. We took our eight inch cube to make a 10 inch block. Love that. So two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. I just love it. So when you think about the cubes, you know, an eight inch cube can make a four and a six and an eight and a 10 and a 12 and a 16 right. inch block. But look at this cool cornerstones in here. I it's love this. Cool. So you'd need the eight inch and mix the, and match and the companion angles. Yes, and the two and a half inch strip back. Okay, oh, this is go far out groovy. <laughs> I wish I'd have this is this. so fun. And this is Riley Blake fabric for this one. And this is a perfect example of how we turn those blocks on point, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it gives it a completely different look. That's right. Yep. And, and so technically these are all just part of the block, but it almost looks like it gives you that sashing. Yeah, isn't it stunning? It's really fun. I love this fabric down here. I do too. Don't forget these are free patterns available at AccuQuilt.com. Oh, this is another one of our favorites. We are like Eleanor. This we is are. our Go Modern Sampler Mini Quilt. It's by Missy Shepler of Shepler Studios. It's Dear Stella fabric and it's with our new four inch cube and companions. And I feel like if Lynn were here, she would this she would steal she this. She would one. steal this one. Okay, so this one is interesting, quilters, because the cornerstone is just all white fabric, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to create the sashing here and then long strips of yep. sashing. No yep. cornerstones needed. But we've got all those fun shapes. They're just so adorable. The signature block, our yep. kite. It's fabulous. Look at these tiny little quarter square triangles. Tiny quarter square triangles. That's why I love that one. Okay, I didn't see this quilt until this morning. It is truly my favorite of all of it, only because of the fabric. So first we had our little mini sampler. Yep. And now we've got our quilt called Go big block quilt. So we've gone from small to big, and it's such Just, cute fabric. It's all candy. Yes, and confetti. confetti. And it only has four huge big blocks. Mm -hmm. So we used our 12 inch cube, right, to make right. an 18 inch block. No, our 12 inch cube to make a 24 inch block. Right, and then we used our two inch strip and we did the sashing and the cornerstone, right and here. then we repeated it again in the border treatment. It's darling, and look at the back fabric. It's more candy. It's fabulous. We love this one. Okay, amazing, amazing quilts in our trunk shop. That's right. All right, quilters, we've got our best people counting up all your votes, and I'm <laughs> excited to see who you select as this week's winner. Do you have a favorite? Wow, this is tough. All right. All right, well, while we do that, let's give away one more little treat today. So we have a little fabric goodie for you from our friends at Northcott Fabrics. They provided this selection of lovely fabric for us to give away, and it's got beautiful colors and prints, very botanical. It is. It has beautiful flowers on it. And then look at this, Erica. So in the center, Ooh. like, that would be really good sashing. Uh-huh. And then look, these cool <gasps> greens oh, for corner the cornerstones. Stones. Oh, that would really yeah. pop. This would fit so wonderfully in my stash, but I guess we'll give it away. Oh, I guess we will. All right, the winner of our today's <laughs> fabric winner is, drum roll please. Marty C. from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Congratulations, Marty. Congratulations. You are gonna love this. Be sure and share your finished projects. Quilters, if you like the show but didn't win this time, be sure to join me every Wednesday, which is tomorrow, 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live on our Facebook and YouTube platforms. Each week I showcase a die, give you some ideas for projects. We always have a great deal and you have a chance to win a prize. That's right. Tomorrow we're going to talk about double wedding ring. Oh, definitely. You want to join Pam and Christina every Wednesday. And remember, today only we're giving you that 27% off your your order, the code, don't forget, it's my 27 at checkout. You would get both that two inch strip die and the 10 inch mix and match cube we talked about. Yep. Throw in a companion, either corners or angles, you're gonna so save $153 Amazing. today. It'll ship for free to the contiguous US and you're gonna get that free go me. 
There's some exceptions that apply, so be sure to check the website for details. And Quilters, you, we know you don't want to miss a minute of our show, but our special is only good until midnight central time. So to order during the show, you can use the phone's camera to capture the QR image and go straight to the site. And if you don't have access to a QR reader, no worries. Just place your order through your browser, open a new tab, and type in accuquilt.com slash party to place your order. You can also find many of our dyes at your local AccuQuilt retailer, like Quilt in a Day. Yes. So go to the store locator at the top right corner of the website. All right, we love having you join us for our special events. So make sure you join us next Tuesday, August 3rd, for our show called See the Places We Will Go. Kelly Ashton's gonna be joining us virtually as we release our newest Die to Try. It's awesome, you're gonna love it. Be sure to register for the event and join us at 12 noon Central Time for the very first look. That's right, and don't forget, when you register for our live Tuesday events, yes. you can be entered to, into our so hot. hot summer sweepstakes with a grand prize of $500. But today is our first giveaway. That's right. For those of you who registered for at least two events in July, you are eligible to win the first $200 in the so, so hot. hot summer sweepstakes. All right, we're about to announce the winner. Quilters, are you ready to cool off with some cool cash? We will be awarding your cash in the form of rewards points that can be used on future AccuQuilt orders. All right, quilters, the first winner of the So Hot Summer Sweepstakes is, drum roll please, Gail L. from Arlington, Texas. Congratulations, Gail. I bet it's so oh, hot I bet there. it's so hot there, too. Oh, we'll draw another $200 winner at the end of August. Just remember, you have to register for it at least two of our live events for the month of August. For other prizes, make sure you register for a minimum amount of events to qualify. Check out the rules on our events page, because there's rules to get all the details and your chance to win. That's right. All right, they're done counting. We're ready to see who won today's inspiration challenge. Is it Tammy with her summer sashing sampler project? Isn't that fun to say? I love it. Or Anita with her pop stars project. I don't know, this was tough. It was. Okay, both products were beautiful, but you viewers voted and today's winner is? Anita. Anita, congratulations, Anita. Yay. Yay. Oh, it was so, they were both just fabulous they projects. Are. All right, Quilters, if you love watching our live show, you enjoy watching behind the scenes videos on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. We filmed one this morning. That's right, we did. You'll gain exclusive access to our studio here, see all the fun we have. We also love to share your stories and quilts and more on our social media pages. We certainly do, so be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss out on any of our fun. All right, Quilters, we're signing off thanks to the amazing and wonderful Eleanor Burns for joining us today. We loved everything about her. We did. Everything. Always. All right, if you've been waiting for our show to end Dubai, now's the time. Remember to use the code MY27. It's good until midnight central time. Make sure you get your goodies before the deal is gone. And remember, at AccuQuilt, we're here to help you cut time. So you can quilt more. Goodbye. Goodbye.